All right, so now we're looking at the hip, the hip joint. So you can see um, heel contact, mid stance, moving into toe off, and then a little bit of the swing phase. So let's look at the first, the first couple of phases. So basically you are beginning to extend from the first half of stance phase very slightly. Okay, so there's maybe a couple degrees of extension. Um, and why you are opposing gravity is because if you think about it, if you stop, right, so there's a breaking force as you um, hit heel contact, basically you're stopping and at that fulcrum, this whole upper limb is still continuing forward movement, all right? And so it's basically gonna cause you to go into hip flexion, almost like pike your, your upper body. And so you have a concentric contraction of your gluteus maximus or hamstring muscle group, which is trying to keep this body or this big large mass upright. All right, so in the first beginnings of extension, you're opposing gravity, concentric contraction of your gluteus maximus and hamstring. However, later, um, when you're still going through extension, right before toe off, much greater extension, you are controlling gravity. Um, and kind of a, a, this, this whole um, joint is going into extension and you're controlling it, eccentric contraction of your iliacus and psoas muscles. So it's creating an, a stretch on these iliacus and psoas muscles, which then will concentrically contract during um, swing phase. So again, we have an e oops. Sorry, eccentric followed by a concentric, which you know is a stretch shortening cycle. So your hip is really designed to create a stretch um, in that iliacus and psoas with an eccentric contra contraction going into swing phase with a, a large flexor motion, um, maximizing on that uh, stretch shortening cycle concept. So in the beginning, concentric contraction, you are extending, that's your joint motion, and your joint torque is extension, so you would be using those those um, hip, those hip um, extensors, which are your hamstrings. We have the hamstrings in solid and your rectus femoris in, um, in squares. Your rectus femoris here also is, be, is showing function of what it does at the knee joint right now. Um, so let's look at the, hip, the hamstrings. And then when you're continuing through eccentric contraction, um, it's extension and you, the joint torque or motion is a flexor moment, you would look at the hip flexors. And for this, and these data, we represent the hip flexors by the rectus femoris because it's very hard to get an EMG signal of the iliacus and the psoas because they are deep and indeed our hip flexors are on. And then we go through, here's our hip flexors again during, during the, the swing phase where you have a huge flexor motion to advance that limb. Okay. Another way we can look at it is through this power diagram. So we have, these are the kinematic data. These are the hip, knee, ankle moments or hip, knee, ankle torques. Right, and remember for the definition of a concentric contraction, the, the joint motion and the joint torque are the same. The definition of an eccentric contraction are the joint motion and the joint torque are opposite. So this allows you to, to double check your analysis of the, of the graphs. And so here is the power, which if you have, are generating power, that is a concentric contraction. If you are absorbing power, that is an eccentric contraction. So this is a good um, graph to kind of wrap your head around what's going on during the, um, the gait cycle. So <clears throat> let's start with the knee joint, right? So we had, um, at heel contact, we had an eccentric contraction, so we were absorbing power, so that matches, and then a concentric contraction of your quads, which propels you forward, and you were generating power or having a concentric contraction. Same thing in the ankle joint. At um, heel contact, you have an eccentric contraction of your gastroc 
soleus followed by a concentric, a huge generation of power from a concentric contraction at your ankle joint. The hip is a little different, right? So we had a concentric contraction um, to prevent that piking forward of your large upper body mass. So a concentric contraction followed by an eccentric contraction of your iliopsoas and rectus femoris, right, creating a stretch, followed by, in the swing phase, a concentric contraction. And so this, the, these lines at um, about 40% of the gait cycle, again, separate stance from swing phase. So if you have any questions on this graph, please let me know.